Okay. So this is about the, the, the right position. Um, I sometimes actually like the uh, whole leg flat and the ankle hanging off the edge because I can mobilize and manipulate the foot at the same time. So I'll maybe start with that. Do you want to just relax so that you look a little bit tense there as well, Adrian? Sorry. Sorry. Let's just chill out, mate. Let's have, let's have a look. Chill out, mate. Let's, uh... Okay, right. Let's um, start with our probe in transverse. So I'm just going to plonk it anywhere there in the middle. Ideally, just in front of the ankle here. So get your jelly just spread out. Um, straight away, uh, we, we want to go quite superficial initially because we're going to look at all the tendons here. So straight away, you can see uh, if Adrian, want, you just want to point, put the pointer at the top of the picture so it will help to orientate everybody. So we've got skin right at the top here. And then you can see quite nicely some tendons here in cross section. So if you chop a sausage in half and look at the end of it, that's a cross-sectional view. You can see here his uh, neurovascular bundle. You can see as I'm scanning over the lateral side. You can see that pulse pulsing away. We could put some, uh, you, to, um, could, uh, you can put some color flow in there and you can help to see. So if you're doing your uh, nerve blocks, for example, yeah, this is a nice way to localize it. And then um, if you just uh, get your probe in position here in the middle of the screen, and if you just use your finger very close to the probe and just press in there a little bit, um, can you see I'm pushing down? If I just get that right in the middle here, can you see I'm actually moving the image here so I can see, right, right on his, I'm gonna press right down here. You can see the pressure coming from the, right hand side of the box yeah so sometimes when we do uh, injections it's quite nice to be able to just press around and palpate exactly where you are in real time so you can see now my finger is really central right over that complex yeah so you can even make a little indentation there with your nail and you've got your anatomical marking so sometimes you haven't got sterile jelly or something you can uh, what i do uh, what i call it is um ultrasound uh, assisted injection mm -hmm. so we just sorry pressing into you there too hard Adrian it's so right. we just put the probe where we want it to where the injection wants to go we can just locate and landmark exactly where our structure is and then you can take your probe away sterilize everything and do injection exactly where you marked it I use that technique quite a lot because sometimes it's a real faff to do ultrasound guided injection mm -hmm. and film it and report on it and you know all the other bits and bobs that you've got to do uh, in a busy, fast-paced clinic. Okay, so let's move uh, centrally. Let's go medially. Let me just switch my probe around here. Okay, let's go medially here, and let's try and pick up our tibialis anterior. So I'm just going to ask Adrian to relax his ankle. And we're going to pick up the tibant here. Adrian's just going to pinpoint it out. So let's try and get that right in the middle of the screen here. You should see a little bit of a black halo around the tendon. That's quite normal. It's not a sign of tenosynovitis. So bear in mind, the tib kind of crosses across here. It goes a little bit um, sort of anterior lateral to medial. So can you see how to keep on it? I'm not going in a straight line. I'm having to follow the contour of the foot medially as it dips down under the navicular there. Yeah, you can see it thinning out and broadening out as it gets closer to the insertion. And you're just gonna try and keep that in the middle of the screen. It's really off putting this out, so this um, timing issue. Yeah, it's, um... Okay, not to worry. You can see here, keeping the tendon right, right in the middle of the picture. And I'm just gonna follow that up. You know, keep very, very little pressure on your probe here. And you'll find if you fall into the deep blue sea and you can't see it, you need to go back to where you picked it up, get it back in the center of your screen then follow it back up again. All right, so we've looked at the uh, tip out in, um, in our cross-sectional view. Uh, if you're looking for rips and tears, usually they're intrasubstance, so you'll kind of see them on the inside of the tendon. So this is how you sort of pick that up. And again, we're just scanning midfoot, so I'm just looking at it through the midfoot section. Okay, now let's get it back in the middle of the picture. Um, you want to spin your probe on that and see it stretching out. You see it stretching out there. Wow, that's a really bad 
uh, time issue there. Okay, so can you see we've got the whole Tivan over the midfoot pretty much from front to back. You can see a little bit of fluid in the paratenon and you can see the bony architecture sitting underneath. Okay, so you can just follow that down so this, as it dips off to the navicular insert. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Just shout if it is, Steve. It's just uh, trying to guide it in one place. You can still see the following tendon here. And look how far down I've gone now. I've just gone to the tarsal. The probe on the left-hand side is right over the uh, first tarsal metatarsal joint. All right, so you can come back on that. So that's your tibialis anterior. Commonly injured. Have, do you see many uh, tendinopathies there, Adrian, um, in your practice? It's probably the, the one you see more than the uh, out of the three. But I, don't, I don't see that many. Can you see, guys, how I'm constantly adjusting the probe very slightly? And you can see in real time how that affects the image here. Yeah, very, very slightly clock facing to make sure I maintain a good image. And I'm also moving very slightly from medial to lateral. Now this is kind of textbook image you should be looking for when you're looking at your tibialis anterior. Okay, let's get that one out of the way. Okay, now we want to look at a couple of other tendons while we're here. Let's try and go for the uh, extensor hallucis is fairly straightforward. I'd normally actually just start where it's simplest and pick it up at the big toe. So where you've got um, your Tom, Dick and Harry on the medial aspect, you've got Tom, Haight, Dick on the anterior aspect. So uh, Tom obviously being medial, then hallucis in the middle, and then um, um, digitorum on the outside. So whereas on the medial aspect, you've got Tom, Dick and Harry. On the anterior aspect, you've got Tom, Haight, Dick. So it's quite a good way to remember it. Yeah, so you see how superficial everything is. There's very, very little flesh. It's tendon, skin tendon, and pretty much uh, the bony architecture. So we're pretty superficial here. Uh, we pass right back over the uh, anterior ankle. All right, let's go back to transverse. It's always best to start in transverse because you can pick everything up and look how I'll just roll the probe, rocking it like a cradle from medial to lateral. And look at all those beautiful structures we can pick up. Very, very nice way. And of course, you can stay in your transverse view and, and, and pick those structures and just follow them. Yeah, look, if we're looking for the dorsalis pedis artery, you can see it pulsing away here. Yeah, if you're trying to do a Doppler exam or something, you can't really quite place it. You know, how simple is it to just put your probe on there and just pick it up, you know, exactly where you're going to go. Even in a foot with a lot of edema. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, so that, that, the kind of people with vascular problems that you might be picking up, they've already got a lot of edema. Well, you can still see a lot of the structures with a good, good piece of equipment. So you can follow that with also, so you see how the... Uh, Turn it down there nicely. Yeah, nerve artery vein are there. And you can see the extensor complex here. So you should have the... Deep perineal nerve here somewhere. Yeah, again, if you're looking for your nerve blocks, deep perineal nerves, very nice to pick up. All right, let's come down the foot here. Follow the extensor tendons. So now you'll see that the extensor tendons get really thin. Can we go a bit more? Are you, can you go any more superficial there with the uh, settings so for me? Like, That's yeah. it, yeah. Okay, so you see how we've changed there. Yeah, we can come out and go much, much more superficial and look how much more impressive the image is. So just the small change on the ultrasound uh, settings can really sharpen up your image and bring everything much more superficial and easier to access. And again, if I'm looking uh, to do a guided injection, you know, I can landmark here very nicely by palpating with my finger. The band of my mask is snapped up, so I'm just going to have to freestyle it. Okay, let's go into um, long axis now. And again, we're just on the, uh, where are we here? Extensor hallucis. 
Send in. And there's your turn of the joint. Okay. Right, so uh, for the bony architecture, what I'd like to do is start at the metatarsal. Okay, so we're on the first metatarsal here. You just look for your first MTP joint, plonk it on the top. Just relax your big toe for me there, Adrian. Thank you. Okay, it's always nice to have some tendon in the picture, so let's just get our uh, extensor hallucis in view. So you can see that just sitting over the top, the bright line there is the first metatarsal. So let's follow this up. So here we are, the first tarsal metatarsal joint. And don't forget, it's, it's a fairly, fairly big joint. So you want to scan around this a little bit. So you just go medially around it, have a little peek inside there. As you saw on that little picture I showed you on my iPhone, you're looking for irregular shapes. Now, interestingly, this isn't the most regular first <laughs> tarsal metatarsal joint that I've seen. You can see some small spurry bits here. Yeah, a little bit of spur in there. Very interesting. Yeah. Let's just get back there, sorry. Let's just see if we can pick that up. Timing is really bad today. Sorry guys, if you can't see where I am. Okay, so you can see that little bit of spur in the tendon sitting over, and there's a very obvious spur there. The time is just yeah, weird just today. Just, just a bit laggy. It might be just the internet connection, maybe. Just plug it in. There you go, guys. There's a bit, bit better picture. Yeah, so you can see tendon passing over the top. You can see clearly into the tarsal metatarsal joint. And look at that not regular shape on the end of the uh, first metatarsal. So early signs of Degeneration, I'm afraid we'd, we'd call that there. <laughs> Osteophytic spurring. Lovely. Yeah. You'd be happy to hear that. Okay, then we've got the cuneiform. So let's have a little look at this. And again, this looks a little bit irregular over the dorsum of it. Ooh, right, not, not, right. not the straightest line I've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you know, you, you could be looking at a sporty foot. Yeah, Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> I've been so kicking a lot of balls, balls in his life. You know that that might be a cause of it. Yeah, and then of course we're on to my favourite joint here now. Uh, where are we? That is the uh, navicular cuneiform joint. Yeah. Let me know, that's, let me get some more jellies or better contact for you guys. Oh, it's cool down here. <laughs> Okay, if you've just lost your, your, your way and you've just had to pick up the probe again like I just have, just go back to where you know. Yeah, so back to the first metatarsal and it's quite quick. You just come straight back up. There's that first uh, 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 TMT joint with a little osteophyte. We're back over the communicant form and then we're into the... Uh, yeah, it's happy not the happiest chap either. Navicular cuneiform joint. So even that, look, look at this, guys. Can you see these? Um, <laughs> it, it looks a bit mushy in there. Yeah, that's my technical <laughs> terminology. Yeah, it looks quite mushy in there. It doesn't look nice and clean. You can't see nice clean lines. Uh, there's some erosions around the edges and the periphery. Uh, there's some, uh, I don't know, some little osteophytes, little bit of calcific deposits. We can pick up there. You can see these little white flecks. Just appearing as I just move my probe gently. I just just put the marker on there, and then there's some, yeah. And then there's this cloud of white mushy stuff there. Yeah, so synovitic yeah. um, sort of changes, perhaps. So you know, we, we, we'd want to put the probe on here. Um, uh, the color flow, sorry. We could get you get your box on here and interrogate and see if you can pick up any activity. Don't forget when you when you're looking over the dorsum of your foot with the um, color flow or power Doppler, you, you can, um, you've got to be careful that you're not picking up the deep perineal uh, uh, artery yeah. or vein, you know, so you can get false, false information if you're not careful to get your vein and artery out of the way. Um, so again, sometimes you might need to just go flick your probe into transaxis to make sure you're not, you're not seeing that. Um, Adrian, you're looking worried there. <laughs> I'm just what you do. 
he's not happy he's seen some degeneration yeah, yeah but look look at this stuff guys that's um yeah, not not nice to show you something uh, uh unfortunate for adrian but it's nice to be able to show you something a bit of pathology that's the kind of stuff you'd see in early, early arthritis you know you'd probably want to get an x-ray there and just correlate get a bit more information yeah. It's a bit dodgy here, isn't it? Not a bit squiffy iffy there. Yeah, slightly. Do you remember having an injury? Have you oh, probably. Felt, yeah. yeah. We, we all have, haven't we? Okay, so moving along. Uh, we're keeping the uh, extensive tendon in the picture here. And uh, look, look, look at how wonderful this, this image is. You know, you can just see lovely shapes of the uh, bony architecture. And of course, here now we're into the... Uh, so this here is the full of the tendon of the ligament here. That is... Wonderful to see. Is yeah. That where you are? Yeah, that is. So this is the telenavicular joint we're looking at here. And Adrian's just picked up the uh, telenavicular ligament passing over the top. Yeah, so there's a nice nice image here that you would should uh, uh, try to get with a bit of skin at the top, bit of tendon, a little bit of ligament and joints too. You know, you're seeing a lot of structures all in one little slice. Amazing diagnostic value. Yeah, my favourite uh, joint, the, the, the tail and navicular, and then you're onto the head of the, uh, um, sorry, not tail, yeah, then you're onto the head of the talus. Um, we'll kind of stop there because we don't want to go into ankle territory, which of course is the next next joint up. I'll just show you quickly. You can just see the uh, anterior ankle recess here, this nice sort of V shape. Yeah, but we'll come right back down. We're right back down, so scanning down, staying in your longitudinal plane. So we've been very medial over the foot and we've interrogated, look how many structures we've looked at, just looking at the, you know, the, the medial, medial column or the first ray, uh, as some people like to describe it. Um, so now we'll go, now, now we've not completed our midfoot exam, we've got to look at the, uh, the, the next bunch of joints. So let's go now to our second toe. So just pick up your second toe, flex it and move it. See if you can see the tendon, because sometimes it's easy to palpate. Make sure there's plenty of jelly around. And you can go, if you feel confident enough to, you can go straight into a longitudinal axis here. Or um, if you want to, you can go to transverse axis and pick up all the metatarsals in one go. Yeah, so you can follow the metatarsals up if you want to in transverse mode. Lagging a bit again, isn't it, the, the picture? Just a bit, yeah. Okay, so can you see these rounded shapes? Yeah, we can see the uh, tendon slips over the top and easy the, the top of your metatarsal. So look how much um, detail you can get. So again, uh, uh, just while we're there, not that we were going to include the uh, metatarsals in it, but um, stress fractures, yeah, real, real common. See a lot of them uh, in A&E fracture clinic, metatarsal fractures, just so common, so common. And actually quite nice to see on ultrasound, you know, you can just look at the, uh, 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 the periphery of the bone you're looking at the uh, for, for a bright white signal, and if you see any break in that cortex, yeah, a little defect, little black line, maybe a little crack sort of appearing in the top, yeah, it could be a sign. And then of course, you go into your uh, flick it into long axis and stay on the metatarsal. You might get a little halo of fluid, fluid, fluid stuff. You it's sometimes get that. Edema. Sometimes you get um, some, some flow because, of course, uh, you know, your body's trying to send uh, blood flow to help it to heal and repair. Yeah, so back to where we were. Let's go back to our um, second toe. Let's try and pick that up in long axis. So there's your MTP joint. All right, let's just try and stay on this. So, again, you might have to just adjust your probe because it's not always in an absolutely true straight line. And then, look, we followed it up to the... Uh, second tarsal metatarsal joint, which I find quite an interesting joint. I see um, tons and tons of OA second TMT joint problems. Absolutely tons of them. It's really, really common. This is a nice, healthy looking joint. You'd be pleased to hear, Adrian. <laughs> yes, thanks. Yeah, that looks really nice. Look, let's just see how it's a nice regular line over the top. The cortex is nice and even. Uh, you've got a decent joint space there. Doesn't appear to be any significant erosions. Uh, there's maybe a little tiny bit of an osteophyte there, actually. Actually, sorry to disappoint you, but you can see that extra little bright white little button on the tip of the joint. Yeah, this one. Uh, on, on the, that. on the, yeah, that one. That one. Yeah. yeah. And again, I think you can just make out some ligament over the dorsum. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You know, there's your ligament spanning over the top. Fantastic detail. All right, so from your first TMT joint, you're going to come onto the cuneiform. And again, that looks nice and regular. That's what we we're hoping to see today, is nice, regular shapes. And then you've got the, uh, where are we? Medial cuneiform. Uh, what's the next joint? Oh, God. Navicular. And then we're just going to have a little probe in there in that S space. I'm just going to move slightly medially and laterally. The, the lines look fairly clean and oops, slipped off. Let me come back. The lines here look fairly clean and clear. However, if I go a little bit more medially, I think I just picked up something there. A little tiny osteophyte, maybe. A little calcific deposit just lurking in the top there. But otherwise, I'm not, not too worried. It's got a decent amount of joint space. If you want to, you can uh, twist your probe on that and interrogate it in transection. Uh, again, you can see we're picking up on the uh, lateral side a little bit more. You've got your vein artery nerve complex. Just come over that QA for me. You can just scan up and down a little bit in transverse view. Again, just checking the shape and structure, seeing if you can pick up any defects along the cortex at all. And then go back into your Long axis, spin on it again. Keep it in view. If you get lost in the deep blue sea, just go back down to the toe and start to come back up again. And you'll see now I've completely got my probe the wrong way around. So I'm just going to twist it back the right way. And carry on with my investigation. So now we've gone back to the um, navicular, uh, telenavicular joint. And interestingly, on this bit of the view, can you see, picking up a trace of fluid here over the top of the joint. Yeah, it's actually coming from inside the joint. Can you see that it's tailing down into the joint capsule? So again, we might want to just put our uh, uh, color flow box on here, interrogate this a bit more, see if there's any signs of increased vascularity. We're thinking, you know, is there some kind of rheumatology problem, synovitis, capsulitis type of thing. Again, you can just make out a little bit of ligament over the dorsum, and, and that's just movement artifact I'm picking up there. I'm going to hold my pro real, real still here. Uh, I think you need to tone down the, uh, the, yeah. the power on that a little bit, maybe. There you go. So, yeah, it's no, normal sort of fluid. Would you call that, would you report that, Adrian, in a, in a standard study? Um, I, I suppose I'd mention it, you know, trace of fluid yeah. seen in the tail and the joint as we pass over. And, and bear in mind, when we looked at it, from the more medial side, we didn't really see anything. I think if you just heel toe this bit, it might fill in. It might be just a bit of an such for you. Know, this might be the ligament just being a bit out of. There, you know, I just angle up there, and it just brightens up a little bit. But this, I think you see a bit of fluid. Yeah, well, just uh, can be just just trace. I'd probably call it yeah. just trace of fluid in the. Uh, it's sitting under the ligament. The lig ligament looks maybe slightly thickened, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. You've been kicking the yeah. <laughs> got a, uh, If I can interject, David, I've got a, a request and a question, if I may, please. Yeah. I think now might be a good time. Uh, sure. Can you Im image the intermetatarsal nerves? Mm. Well, it, well, it, well only, only towards the neuron, the side of your, at the end of the toes. I wouldn't. Yeah, I've no. Okay, I mean, you can look into the web space, um, but it's really it's it, it's so difficult because it's it's so um, individual. You know how how much gap they've got between the web spaces for you to actually physically get the you know the footprint of your probe into there to get a, a decent sort of image because it's so tight in there. And if you start to angle your probe around, you're actually going to pick up um, artifact from the bone. So it's quite difficult to get deep enough in there until you actually see thickening of the nerve, which is then, uh, you know, your neuroma. So I mean, we can, we can just dip down here for you. I mean, I'm in the metatarsal space between the second and third right here. And there's a, there's a fair amount of space. So let's see, I don't know if we can, that could be a bit of nerve there to be fair. Mm -hmm. This is in longitudinal axis. So let's have a look. Mm. Hard to call it, isn't it? Yeah. 
It's an interesting question. I've never really bothered to look for it, it's but now that you mention it, it's not something that would come in for scan. No, it's, it's I think I think um, technically you could. Yeah, just um, operator dependent, of course, and then dependent on the patient you're trying to scan. I mean, it's quite quite a skillful thing to do. There's a lot. There's a lot of things that will um, that you can pick up with ultrasound, but because it's not, you're not going to pick it up in everybody. It doesn't tend to come in for a routine ultrasound. It'll either go to MRI or or, or something else. So you, you only tend to get the bread and butter stuff that comes through. Yeah, because nobody's really going to ask you to look at those nerves unless they're looking probably for a Morton. So it's probably a. I mean, yeah, I think I, I think I can pick up a trace of nerve here and there, definitely. Okay. But again, operator dependent, but yeah, good, good, good interesting question. But, okay, uh, so we, sorry, have you got another question? Yeah, I have indeed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Go for uh, it. Uh, um, Okay. okay, if a patient presents with a suspect stress fracture, where are the cortical changes usually spotted? R really, it's quite superficial. You know, they usually crack on the top. Yeah. Yeah, so right over the dorsum. So if you look at the second metatarsal here, I mean, what, what's most common? Probably second and third metatarsals. Yeah. Yeah, you re rarely see it in the, I mean, do see it in the first, but there's no right trauma. Here. And then you just see a little, a little defect in the bone and then a bit of periosteum edema around it. Uh, and then if you put the colour on, you might see a little bit of it, hyperemia. Um, but it's the, it's, the, it's, the step, it's the step difference in the bone that you're looking for. See, that's all straight there. So if you see a step um, where there's like a... Yeah, if you, if you can't see a pure white line, yeah. it's, something's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you want to correlate that with with an X ray, ideally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, this continue because this is the way I, I do a mid foot exam. Um, so we've done the first, we've done the second, we've done the third. So, so we're doing the third. The classic example, actually, it's you know you, you can pick up fractures and things in the toe, but it's it's not something that would come for ultrasound to look at for fractures. You, you don't go for an X ray. Yeah, I'm working in fracture clinic. They, they, they don't make very much of, um, well, digital injuries at least. You know, that, that's standard operating procedure. You barely even x-ray them. And, and to be honest, I, I have x-rayed a few of my time, and it's really interesting to see how they just splinter. They can splinter into just um, sort of look like they've shattered. You know, but neighbours strap it to the next one and, and, and carry on, and it'll sort itself out generally. Uh, but metatarsal injuries, they can require, they'll, they'll usually re require booting at least. It's really difficult to get around on a metatarsal fracture. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the symptomatic, the symptoms should be there that you don't always see swelling and inflammation or any other physical signs. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, not until you get a, a visual eye on it that you can, uh, on metatarsal, either with ultrasound or x-ray that you can actually pick these things up. Yeah. Actually on that then, I was going to keep it till the end, but, um, but if, if there's any thickening, what, what does it look like? Thickening? A thickening of the bone i would imagine so uh do you want to clarify that mark feel free it, 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 i mean you do get don't forget you you'll likely get some bony callus after the event and uh, you know through yeah, the yeah. stages of healing yeah. um, so you know th that'll look like a little uh, lump lump you know it'll show us a little lump on the on the white line yeah. it'll be a slightly raised you, you might you may find it's got some vascularity in it yeah. while it's going through the looks like a little cloud probably over the, over the yeah. original and, and sometimes that can be a long term sort of um, defect there you'll always have a little bit of a bump sometimes depending on how bad the, the fracture is where it's calcified and try to come together again okay thank you I think mark the the, the uh, question came when we were talking about the nerves and the aroma Oh, right. well, sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, personally, if I'm if I'm doing a, uh, an exam for a neuroma, I'll always try to um, I'll always look at the metatarsals and, and actually up to the tarsal metatarsal joints, uh, because it's very common to find stress fractures around neuromas. I don't know why. Uh, I'm not sure with the science, but it's just something that is um, common. I think maybe because of the mechanical changes or something possibly. But um, we, we always try and rule out metatarsal fractures. Um, you know, in, in, in acute injuries, at least anyway, where you think in your own, it's been you know six weeks or less. I mean, more chronic, long-term stuff. You know, it's likely not very likely you're going to find stress fractures. But um, the, the, I mean, we're, we're, we're in the private clinics these days, I think we're getting more and more uh, acute stuff. You know, it's not always a, a chronic. So yeah, it's very useful to be able to just put your probe on and 
see what's going on. And, and don't forget to rule out your tendons. It's really important. You know, you do. They are, it is hard and difficult to pick up tendons initially. Yeah, you're just looking at. I'm just going into transverse view here over the metatarsals just to see the see if we can pick up the slips of the extensor tendon complex. Yeah, they they they, they, they do tear. They do rip. You know, hyperflexion injuries, hyperextension injuries. So you can just can you make out these little um, slips sitting above the metatarsals? Interestingly, you've got these little God, fit bits everywhere, Adrian. <laughs> yeah. He's mutating. Okay, let's go. Uh, so yeah, just follow your metatarsals. Transverse view is really nice because you can pretty much keep three of them comfortably in view. Four if you're really skillful like I am. Look. <laughs> but yeah, there's the three main metatarsals you want to rule out stress fractures on. Yeah, and then you back up into the midfoot. All right, uh, let's go back to where we were. So we've got to go back to our third metatarsal, you know, being very particular here, but you've got to be thorough with these exams because, you know, a millimetre this way, that way, and you completely miss what you were, uh, you know, the whole point. So be very, very uh, specific. Make sure you do a full examination every time. Okay, um, third metatarsal. All right, let's follow that up. Making sure it's nice and clean line. You can see some extensive tendon across the top of your picture. Always want to try and keep the two in the image if possible. And then we're moving up onto the TMT joint, which is right here. So that looks fine. That looks nice and healthy, nice regular shape. Tendon looks good over the top. So we can pass right over that, over the cuneiform, which is again, it's looking a bit, little bit gritty there in some views. And we saw that when we went transverse there too. Yeah, so it's like uh, around the ligaments, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's around the ligament insertions. So maybe you had uh, some some trauma here on the dorsum of your foot in the past. More than likely. Yeah, there you can actually pick up. Uh, oh, there you go. Let's, should we show the guys that um, artery? Right, oh, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see dorsalis pedis pulsing away. We'll take some pressure off. There you go. If you want to get your uh, Doppler there, yeah, you want to listen to the uh, artery. You're just struggling to pick it up. Look how great it is to find with the ultrasound. Can you, can you see that part of it's red and part of it's blue? Yeah. Um, and that's and that's simply because red is towards the probe, blue is away from the probe. So, so. This, this, this flow is flowing this way as it's coming towards the probe and then going away from the probe here. So that's why you get a black in the middle because it's neither to or fro, it's, it's, it's uh, perpendicular to the beam. So it's, it's basically black here. That's why you get everything up to that point is coming towards the probe and then I think after that point it's going away from the probe. So that's, that's why you get a red and blue there. Yeah, for all those pods in training, you know, you're hearing about this dorsalis pedis artery a lot. Yeah, that's how it looks. And look how great ultrasound is. So, you yeah. know, brilliant for students to start getting involved because you don't really need any um, specific training on this. You know, it's all part of your remit. And, uh, yeah, just if you can get your hands on an ultrasound and just start scanning and looking. There's a lot of very interesting features and a lot of diagnostic value to foot and ankle with. With your ultrasound, of course. Be careful with lumps and bumps, though. <laughs> Always careful with lumps and bumps. And you, you, you do find them here on the dorsum of the foot. You do see bursas. Um, you do see effusions. Um, I was going to mention something else interesting. It's just just slipped my mind. Um, you know, not only that, not only that. Don't forget, you can look at things dynamically. So, let's have a look at that. A uh, couple of midfoot joints here again, with a bit of tendon over the top. And you know, I'm going to put, apply some pressure downward pressure and you can gap the joints you can rotate them you can move them around and you can see your tendons moving dynamically you can even see their dorsalis pedis moving around yeah as it as the skin moves you get some movement artifact yeah some I mean, calcific stuff there is again <laughs> what is that you're not going to come again are you adrian God, it's just, just slagging off my foot. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for a nice, easy one today, just because of that, that, that flu jab frazzled my brain. But um, 
No, that's fine. Uh, let's go uh, more laterally. So, okay, let's let's get let, let's skip the the fourth because I think we're a bit tight on time now. I'm just going to apply a little bit more jelly, and let's have a look at the sort of an, a, anterior lateral side a little bit of the midfoot. See if we can pick up the. Uh, the, the, the fifth, because of course, this, this is a real common place of stress fractures, right? Your, your, your fifth ray, the uh, fifth metatarsal and styloid process. So, again, uh, you know, you can start on the dorsum here, or you can start a little bit laterally. I'll start dorsally uh, to begin with. So, just get a little bit of the uh, MTP joint in the picture. Okay, and remember, it's slightly oblique. Yeah, you're not, you're not in a straight line. Sorry, let me get back on there. I'll just look at my pro placement. Let me do it with my left hand so you can see. Okay, so there's our fifth metatarsal. So let's follow this this guy. Um, now we've come to our, uh, oh, look at that. You've got some uh, perineal tendon sitting over the top. That's not perineal, sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, perineal ter tertius, is it? Yeah, probably tertius. tertius there. Yeah, that's pretty cool because not everybody, you can't no, see that in everyone. Yeah. yeah, and that'll go right up. We can follow that. That's really nice to see. Anyway, I wasn't going to look at that, but there's tertius for you. Let's go back to our metatarsal, fifth metatarsal. So this is a spot of common common spot for um, stress fractures, isn't it, Adrian? Yeah. see tons and tons of them here on the fifth. Um, so, yeah, any sort of lateral foot pain, I'll always have a little look around here. At the metatarsal, so I'm just struggling to give you a nice picture there. Could you a bit? Yeah, maybe if you just go a bit more actually, because you, you can come straight on, on the side of it, then that's great. Thank you. Okay, there we go. So let's get your uh, styloid process. Yeah, there you can see it sticking out, and uh, this base of the fifth is really, really commonly injured. A lot of stress fracture issues can happen here. A lot of actually, this at this time of year. Uh, we, we tend to see a lot of non-union stress fractures here. Yeah, they're just, uh, it can be an absolute sub for them to, to heal up. Mm -hmm. I think maybe just because it's a, a load-bearing point. Uh, but, you know, the, these fractures can go on and on and on. Um, so even, you know, you can see chronic, chronic uh, non-unions. You know, we see people with, uh, you know, a year or two down the line. Uh, they've still got lateral foot pain. We x-ray them and you can just see that they had a previous fracture, which, because, of course, in a fracture like that, if it's not full thickness, um, you know, fracture clinic will will look at that and you know expect it to heal within four to six weeks and send you on your way. Uh, but on occasion, they just don't knit together for some reason. All right, so you can come over that. You can just see a little bit of. Uh, I'm just going to angle slightly so you can pick up some tendon. Yeah, and actually, we want to get the uh, cuneiform joints. Actually, let me go back to the tarsum, uh, the fifth, and I'll come over the dorsum a little bit so you can see the. Uh, TMT joint here, just in the middle. Oh, that's pretty cool. We'll come in there, then we'll follow the rest of the rest of that till we come to the joint, which is your uh, fifth tarso. I've gone a bit high there. Calcaneo cuboid, cuboid joint. Uh, nice regular shape of the bone. There's your Oh gosh, you're doing it to yourself now. And where are we there then? Is that the um, that is more that's more cut keyboard joint there. No, gone no. past it, haven't we? And then we'll come back. Oh, Sub Taylor joint is a bit hard to make out, but we won't cover it right here. We'll go up to. We'll just stay at the styloid. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, so we're going to do that in ankle, aren't we? So if you want to go off um, a little bit lateral, if you just angle your probe diagonally between the lateral malleolus, if you can see it, and the uh, uh, styloid process, the fifth met head, you should be able to pick up your perineal tendon. And if you can't, just flick it into transverse axis. So look at the styloid and you should be able to pick it up over the top here. It's the angle of the dangle, isn't it? Transverse and um, long axis, sorry. There you go. There's your perineal. Perineus longus sitting right there. And I just follow that to the styloid. Base of your fifth.
So can you see how I'm having to angle and manipulate the probe a lot to get there? Yes, there is. Yeah, so I was, I was in the deep blue sea earlier, but I didn't lose my patience, you know, just be methodical and concise and just go back to whatever bony landmark, you know, and start to pick it up again from there. So, you know, it is a dynamic examination and everyone's anatomy is different. So sometimes you will just feel like you're in the deep blue ocean and not really um, making out what you're seeing. But again, just go back to what you know and start and pick up it again. All right, so that's, um, so that's I think, covered most of the uh, midfoot structures. Um, we've talked about the tendons, we've talked about the joints, uh, the common uh, bony problems. We've talked about uh, common points for stress fractures. Um, another one that I find, I mean, the, the most interesting one is the second, is uh, we mentioned is the second tarsal metatarsal joint because um, you see how um, these are all sitting in a row and they're quite nice. So you've got your cuneiform and tarsal metatarsal joints. Sometimes um, you can see that one is slightly raised above the other. Yeah, so is that, you know, have you ever seen a um, slightly subluxed second? Yeah, yeah. I'd probably get a complementary x-ray. Yeah, so th these can, you know, think about that little cuneiform there. It's a little tiny square bone. Let's just go back to our, yeah, this, this little, yeah, so you followed your second metatarsal here, you've come to your second TMT joint, and I've just showed you that picture there, the three bones that we're looking at. And sometimes what, what we find is this little bone has popped up very slightly. Yeah, so it's almost like a sub subluxation, and it can sit a little bit higher and more prominent than the rest. Uh, I, I, an interesting uh, chiropractor friend of mine showed me a technique where you kind of manipulate it and mm. pop it back in place. Um, you, do, you, you, do, you do see them. Uh, but when he when he told me about that, um, I started scanning them more because I thought, okay, so these midfoot things, you know, probably there's a lot more out there than I actually see. Yeah. But in actual fact, what what I found over the years of just looking at different people's feet is, is that sometimes you you can actually physically see the raised lump on the top of the foot, oh, and it's sort of like a real bony lump, you know, real bony ridge. So yeah. I, I started to assume that everybody had a subluxed second uh, intermediate cuneiform, uh, and when I investigated them, I found that. Um, probably 90% of them are actually osteophytes, osteophytic changes over here. So they can get real bony, thickened ridges over the top of this joint. Yeah. And it can look like it's a sublux. I mean, I've, so th this chiropractic guy was calling everyone that he saw with this raised lump a sublux. Yeah. yeah. And so he's manipulating the heck out of everybody. <laughs> but actually what I found was that there's a lot more of them had arthritis. So I think I found yeah, pr probably a handful of people where there was probably a subluxation, mm. but the rest of them, that, that bony lump that you get on the top was, was it was like, it looks like a volcano, you know, it's got yeah. twin peaks there, it's yeah, got yeah, real yeah. prominent sides to it. So just, just interesting point for you, because you, you'll, you'll, you'll find that a lot, particularly in the uh, older generation. Uh, I think we've got a few minutes left there, um, Steve, looking at my clock. Is, is there any um, questions we need to deal with while we... There's not, there's not oh, a waffle in. Very quiet, everybody, this evening. I'm going to put everyone to sleep with my, my waffle today. I'm going to put it down to your thoroughness. Um. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we've covered mostly the dorsum. I mean, you can look at the plantar aspect, right? But, um, you know, there's just, I mean, there's a, a lot of muscles in there. You've got, you know, layers and layers. I'm, I'm not the most skilled at um, naming them all. Um, I'll probably just look to see. I mean, if you've got plantar midfoot pain, you're probably looking at the plantar fascia is the, the number one. Yeah, and that, that, that's a whole different exam. We'll talk about that in another. But, you know, potentially if you've got plantar foot pain, I don't know, if you're looking for foreign bodies and things, it, it can be quite useful. You know, stood on a nail or, you know, got a splinter in your foot or something. But otherwise, uh, you can maybe see there's some, some, some hypertrophy to some muscles perhaps. Um, but otherwise, it's not usually um, part of a standard uh, examination. Um, do, do have a look but I mean you, you can't really get to the bony architecture and the underneath of it or can you depending on the foot yeah, and the, well. you know, how, how deep you can get with your probe never really tried to because it's not not something we're taught when we're doing a mid, mid foot exam no. but well, technically that's the you know the plantar aspect of it so um, you, yeah. you probably do want to rule out a mid portion plantar fasciopathy or something one or two questions coming in thank yeah. you Actually, a question about the hockey stick. I almost uh, jumped in when we were talking about uh, the difficulty of finding the nerve earlier. Is there any, uh, but, but a general question about, about the nerve? Uh, any benefit of using a hockey stick? 
Hockey stick, yeah, great. Um, you can get much more um, detail, um, and it's nice and small, and it can get. It's a lot easier. I mean, you can see how this evening we've been. Um, I've been struggling to just keep the probe in place and talk to you with one hand because it's quite a large footprint here. Um, so it's kind of pros and cons because you, your hockey stick's about half of that. So you're only going to see a much smaller, narrow window. Have you seen that this evening? There, the good thing is I can put that probe on and get loads of bones in one picture. You can almost get the whole midfoot in one picture if you want to. Yeah. So you know, I mean, tra traditionally the hockey stick was for you know, um, in you know, injection really. Okay. It's, it's quite because it's quite um, easy on the you know handling it. Like you hold it like a pen, and you can control your your needle with the other thing. So it, you know, it's, it's really good for people that are doing injections, but it's great for looking at the, the joints on the top. Um, but you know, if you look at if you're looking at one one probe, you want to buy a machine with one probe, and you can't afford another probe, yeah. then you might be a bit limited by buying just a hockey stick, yeah. because obviously you might want to look at the plantar fascia, you might want to look at the whole, um, you know, a bit, bit more of a broad spectrum of the of the foot to look at the bones. Uh, like Abby's doing now, you can get a, quite a few bones in the picture, whereas with the hockey stick, you probably wouldn't. So you tend to you tend to lose that uh, anatomical awareness with the hockey stick probe. Um, I, I, I've never felt left out. You know, I've, I've played around with them on, on, on courses and training and things. And um, yeah, they, they, they're quite nice to handle, but I, I've never actually owned one myself. And I don't feel left out for that whatsoever. I don't think, uh, I, I think, you, you know, the, 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 the normal size probe, um, you've just got a lot more options because don't forget you can do the plantar service, you can do the heel, the ankle. You know, it's it's, it's a bit small and it's a bit fiddly actually. Yeah. I find it. You just got it's nice to hold a, a, a bigger probe. You've got more control over it, perhaps. Steve, have you you've got you've got one in between these, haven't you? I think. Have you got? A, when, 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 I think when you first when we first started, we had a different. I'm yeah. sure we had a smaller probe. Yeah, it was. It was there is, and it, that was used when you had the the cart. Um, yes, that's right. The size yeah. of it now that that one's probably that one's probably ideal because it's that's right. The the good news is that that's limited on on the on the portable scanners, but that is that is changing. They are starting to introduce them. Oh, okay. I think on the X five, which is what you've got there, they have actually got the. The, uh, um, the the number escapes me, but you're absolutely right. It's between the linear that you've got there, the seven four one, and the hockey stick, uh, and there is one in between which you have seen on the cart based scanners, and they are slowly but surely introducing them to the portable scanners. So yes. we will be adding that to the range. I think the X five already has that option. Don't quote me on that, but if anybody wants more information on that, I can come back to them. Yeah. So if I, if I was, yeah. sorry. So if I was if I was buying you know one one probe, that's mm -hmm. that's the pro probably the one I would go for because if, yeah. if you're not doing too much um, hamstrings or you know things where you need a, lot, a large field of view um, and you're working intricately on the foot, then somewhere in between between that probe is probably ideal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we do, I mean we do find. Most of the scanners we sell are with the one probe. The linear probe that you've got there is 95% of the one that, that, that people have as their first probe. Yeah. Some people take the hockey stick as a, as a second option. It's a nice to have option as well. Uh, though, you know, those that have got it like it and use it, but though, as you, you rightly said, uh, Abby, that those that don't have it don't feel as though they're too left out. But uh, there is a benefit of buying the second probe with your scanner. You do get a better deal. So there is some there are some benefits there. Um, but I won't go too much into to the numbers now. But, uh, but there is a benefit of having the um, second probe at the same time. Uh, and the hockey stick tends to be the favourite second. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, a couple of other questions. Um, I think it came up quite recently in, in previous week. Uh, is the ultrasound any use for Liz Frank injuries? I mean, you, you can pick you can pick up the you know the displacement and fracture and stuff, but I think I think it's traditionally go, goes to X-rays, isn't it? Yeah, you'll definitely pick it up. Um, well, more than likely pick it up, depending on your quality of machine and scanning skills. Um, but yeah, again, anything midfooty, fractury sort of thing. You, 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 if you suspect that, you you want to send it for an X-ray one way or the other. Uh, but it's really nice to pick up and let your patient know that, you know, because you can quite confidently say that there's a fracture there or not. Yeah. You send them off down to A&E or whatever and, uh, 
you know, to get that confirmed by x-ray and uh, make you look good. Thank you. Got a couple of requests as well, actually. Uh, I'll give you both requests. They're both slightly different. But, um, can we look at the sesamoids, please? And anything on spotting, any pairs of the plantar fascia? I know we probably covered that. Yeah, yeah sesamoids, I'll give you a quick, quick whiz. No problem. I did say that you, you took requests, so I... Absolutely. <laughs> That's what we love. Interactivity. It's the, the, the 2020 way, isn't it? Yeah. Get some gel out. While Abid's doing that, while Abid's doing that quick uh, plug then on, on our... Um, to see previous weeks, for those of you who missed previous weeks, go onto our website. Uh, there's a, um, a, a CPD uh, link, and you can go and have a look at all the previous weeks that we've done. The sesamoid is included, the plant fascia is included. Uh, so go and go and uh, you know go through our back catalogue. Um, uh, How about that for a lovely pair of sesamoids? Yes. There you go. See, he's com paying your compliments now, Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shut them out. So you can see the two two shapes. What one's uh, uh, um, so that's uh, medial. Yeah, that's lateral. Medial, lateral. You can see the flexor tendon in the middle here. Plate here. Plate. A bit, a bit more central if you like to. Yeah, so I'm just moving my probe very gently, probably only about three four millimeters because they're this small. So I'm scanning right over and through them. So you just go from front to back till you see them appearing because of course you can pick up uh, bipartites and, and, and fractures of sesamoids usually fairly confidently as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course uh, you want to focus in on one, just just pick one to uh, spin your probe on. So I'll go right to the, let's get the medial sesamoid in the picture. Let's go that way, keep it in the view. Oh, I lost it there. There you go. Okay, just angling my probe a little bit to give you good optimization. Yeah, so there's your uh, medial sesamoid. You can just see a little bit of plantar plate there. Can you just uh, relax your toe for me, Dean? That's it, that's yeah, better. Know, drop into place. He's a right hyperextender, this guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the sesamoid, medial sesamoid, so you can see the nice rounded shape. You can see the uh, flexor tendon on both sides of it. Try and give it the pigeon. It's fiddly because it's, you know, I've got a big probe here and it's quite small, so it's a bit of a fiddle. And this guy keeps hyperextending, making it difficult for me. Right. Yeah, and I'm just going to move very, very slowly. Let's move laterally, laterally, laterally until you just start to see the next one appear. Yeah, so it's just a very, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just such a fine little movement. This is millimeters you move in yeah probably five six millimeters from one to the other maybe so just do it nice and slow try and keep it in the middle and always look at everything in transverse and long axis to get a real overview i mean you could you could think that's a little defect there if you weren't you know uh, you can see this but look how if i just manipulate the probe you can feel that that, that shape in fairly well and then if you're really not sure i don't know is it a little break in the cortex no it's fine look I can fill it in completely by moving the probe. Yeah, it's nice, nice and regular, really. And then again, just uh, spin on it, and you'll see them uh, come back into view again. So there's a uh, paracetamoids for you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, the question was to have a look at it, so I'm sure they'd be delighted. With thank you. Um, and then cool. the and the plantar fasciitis tears was it. I think um, uh, th this is this trick because uh, mid portion ones. I mean, here's here's your plantar fascia picture, right? So you've got your fat pad, you've got your calcaneus, and you've got your plantar fascia, which you know they're just lovely to see on ultrasound anyway. Um, it's really easy to pick up plantar fasciitis and, and tears. Yeah, I mean you're going to have to gap, gap it a little bit, so you're going to have to pull on your big toe and hyperextend that uh, to put some tension through it uh, and interrogate it. Um, do you know what? Adrian probably sees more tears of them than I do. I've seen more of your reports talking about tears, and uh, yeah. you know, they can be full thickness. I suppose you can, you know, you can tear it all the way through. You can have a linear tear. You can have a partial tear. Uh, just the same kind of grade of tears as you do in ligaments. You know, one to four, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. They become they become very sort of hyperchoic and thickened, and they're sort of bulge. 
Um, you'll lose the fibres, you won't quite see all these nice stripy bits in there. And a little, a little oh, trick actually, if, you, if you're not quite sure of a tear or not, if you look down here on this, uh, oh, I don't know you can, can you see my arrow? Yeah. Okay, just underneath that, see it says DR. Mm -hmm. Underneath the green arrow, you can see DR. Mm -hmm. that's, that's your dynamic range. Um, if, you, if you take that down, it just limits the amount of black and white that the image uses, and it'll, it'll, it has the effect of just uh, emphasizing where your gap is. So if you take that right down, let me actually let me do it. I'm doing it. There you go. So you see how it's going very, very black and white. But when, you, when you've got a tear there, you can uh, let me just turn this up a bit. When you've got a tear there, and you take and take the dynamic range down, you can really start to emphasise whether that's a tear or 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 not. So just play around with your dynamic range because it's, it's a really underused tool. Yeah, brilliant tip there, Adrian. Getting, getting more into advanced scanning skills here now. Uh, but yeah, tears, te I mean, I, I would follow it all the way, um, <coughs> all the way to your first. So here we just, we've come off the calcaneus now. Uh, we're just keeping that, you, you'll see it thinning out and getting thinner and thinner and thinner. This, I mean, I think we do, we do see uh, mid portion tears and um, you know, you'll see that little area of thickening and all, all, the, all the things that you've just described there, Adrian. Um, you know, at any any point within the fascia, because bear in mind it, it attaches and inserts um, at the MTP joints. So here I'm, I'm following it to the first. It becomes very very thin, yeah. but you can probably just make it out. Yeah, just relax your toes for me, Mister Hyperextender. Okay, and there you go. You're just seeing it right right at the top of the screen. Yeah, just a nice line. And again, you know, if we go back to the mid portion bit, there's that slow down thing again. Yeah. Yeah, and I just like to hyperextend the, the big toe and just kind of um, put some tension on it. See, more, more, more commonly, you'll probably pick up fibromas and little cysts. Well, whether or not that was a sign of a previous tear, yeah. But yeah. Just don't forget to go, sometimes. because obviously the plantar fascia is quite a broad thing, don't get to go transverse, because you, you will miss fibromas out to the side if you're just looking long section. Yeah, don't forget your, your five slips of the fascia. So again, you could ideally you'd follow each one of the um, yeah, from from the MTPJ. Sorry, dude, just to relax again. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, so just find your MTPJ and find the uh, oh, there's that slow down thing. Hang on. Yeah, and just follow it, follow it down. Increase your reflectivity if you need to. And yeah, there you've got that sort of the, the central slip we're on here. So I'd probably look at the first, second and third. I think it's rare to see anything go wrong with it on the sort of fifth or the fourth perhaps. Although not, not, not unusual. Uh, not un, uh, yeah, but m m most stuff you'll see reported on at least will be the medial or central branches. Don't often see anything reported on the lateral. Yeah. No. Thank you.